protein with 30 grams of protein. Those who tried me felt more energy in just two weeks. Uh, Here, I'll take that. Ensure Max Protein with 30 grams of protein, one gram of sugar. Enter the Nourishing Moments giveaway for a chance to win $10,000. M-I-L-A, last name K-U-N-I-S. I play Jackie. Tomorrow on E.T., E.T. Volt unlocked Mila Kunis from that 70s show to her present-day love story with co-star-turned-husband Ashton Kutcher. Oh, I love a good love story. Now, we leave you with one of our all-time favorite Julia Roberts moments from the E.T. Vault. Julia and her Larry Crown co-star, you may have heard of him, huh. Tom Hanks, reacting to their first ever E.T. interview. These are some of my favorites. Hi, everybody. <laughs> what is your favorite TV show? That's on the air right now? Yeah. Look at that hair. Look at that. Look at that sweat. My favorite TV show? Look at your voice. Look at your voice. Uh, Cartoon Town. Do you want me to move on? <laughs> Cartoon Town. <laughs> We're live at Calaveras Lake, where a holiday fishing trip has turned tragic. Reports of a drowning incident launching a multi-agency search operation this 4th of July. Up next, the latest details on this developing story. Plus, what you can do to help keep your phone from overheating and the long-term effects it can cause if your phone continuously overheats. Fireworks will go off tonight. Coming up, I've got a look at your firework forecast and when triple digit heat will return to San Antonio. The news at five starts right now. And first at five, we begin with that search for a man who fell off a boat this morning at Calaveras Lake. That man fishing with friends on this 4th of July holiday when he fell into the water around 830 this morning. Jonathan Coto has been there all day. He joins us now live from the lake where several agencies continue their search tonight. Jonathan, what's the latest? Tim, well, unfortunately, no updates, but the search continues for a man. Law enforcement officials say was on a fishing trip with friends. Now, Bear County Sheriff Javier Salazar says that they, their search teams have deployed boats onto the water in hopes of finding and locating the individual that was involved in this drowning. Now, this is the latest. Tonight, search and rescue efforts continue as the holiday atmosphere turned into a somber and urgent situation at Calaveras Lake. This morning, about 8, 8.30 or so, uh, there was a boat out on the water with three males uh, in, in the boat. He says a group of friends were fishing when one of them, a man said to be in his 30s, fell overboard by accident. One of the other occupants of the boat did jump into the water and tried to save him, but he was unsuccessful in doing so. Salazar says the boat was not speeding and the victim was not wearing a life jacket. Lake Alaveras covers an area over 3,000 acres and has a depth of about 45 feet. But Salazar says they have a good idea where they need to be searching. The depth where we're at right now is about 23 feet feet, give or take, uh, that they were able to, to uh, gauge it. Uh, so for right now, we're concentrating our efforts there. We know a pretty pretty good area of where, where it, it would most likely happen. Currently, the Texas Game Warden and BCSO have boats in the water and are trying to get a dive team as soon as possible. Now, the park here has remained open throughout the day, except for those with boats. They have not been allowed on the water. Law enforcement officials say they urge everyone to exercise caution and be mindful of water safety as they continue to enjoy their 4th of July celebrations. We're told that search teams will remain here on scene overnight and, of course, will provide you updates as those become available. Reporting live from Calaveras Lake, Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Jonathan. Law enforcement agencies across the United States are on alert tonight as 4th of July events get ready to kick off this after a string of gun violence over the past few days. ABC's Faith Abube takes us to the scenes of some of the latest tragedies. Tonight, police in Fort Worth, Texas, asking for the public's help as they investigate a mass shooting that left at least three people dead and eight others injured. The shooting happening shortly after Como Fest, the annual July 4th celebration where a large crowd had gathered Monday night. Officials say early signs suggest the incident was a result of a fight between two rival groups. The scene so chaotic, police say it was a challenge getting to the victims. Still fireworks were being shot off. Uh, 
Lots of people just trying to flee the area from the multiple gunshots. Investigators say they found 11 of the shooting victims in a parking lot, one of them a juvenile. Just hours earlier, a similar scene playing out in Philadelphia. Multiple shots fired. Police say a gunman carrying a police radio, wearing a bulletproof vest and a mask, fired into a crowd at a July 4th gathering, killing at least five people. Two of the survivors were two-year-old boys, one of them shot four times in the leg, the other injured from broken glass. Such an act of violence is abhorrent and goes against everything we stand for in this community. As the responding officers were helping the victims into patrol cars, investigators say they heard more gunfire, ran towards the suspect, and arrested him. They say they recovered an AR-15 style rifle and a handgun and 50 spent shell casings at the crime scenes. I know that when it comes around holidays where you light up fireworks, some people take this as an opportunity to do shootings. And as of this morning, the Gun Violence Archive shows close to 350 mass shootings this year where there were at least four victims. President Biden tonight calling the shootings tragic and senseless. He's once again calling on Congress to act. In Washington, Faith Abube, ABC News. And an update, a second person who had been taken into custody after firing at the alleged shooter has now been released by police. Back here in Texas, the Department of Public Safety says it will have extra troopers on the road tonight and they're reminding everyone to celebrate safely. So if you plan on drinking, plan ahead, move over or slow down. If uh, you see police, fire, EMS, text dot vehicles or tow trucks stopped with their lights on. Everyone in your vehicle should use a seatbelt, stay off the phone, and be aware of other drivers, and don't cut out in front of large trucks or slam your brakes on in front of them. Good tips for any day when you're out there driving. And if you plan on celebrating the 4th with a bang, a reminder, fireworks use within the city of San Antonio limits is still illegal. Using fireworks in the city is a Class C misdemeanor, which carries up to a $2,000 fine. If you do see reckless use of fireworks tonight, you can call the police non-emergency number. It's 210-207-7273. SAPD says they will prioritize these calls and respond based on risk assessment and the demand of calls. Fireworks, of course, are a staple during the 4th of July holiday. And as fun as they are to shoot off and watch, they're also very dangerous if you don't use them correctly. The Consumer Product Safety Commission says last year, in fact, there were at least 11 deaths associated with fireworks and over 10,000 trips to emergency rooms with firework related injuries. 38% of those injuries were for burns to hands, face, heads and ears. Most of those injuries happening to children. Fireworks aren't toys and they're not for children. They're burning at 2000 degrees it's like a blowtorch. Five things to do to make sure you safely set off fireworks this evening, if that's part of your celebration. Keep a bucket of water or hose handy, only light fireworks one at a time. Move back quickly, don't stand over the fireworks as they're going off. Never try to relight or pick up fireworks that didn't fully ignite, and never use fireworks when under the influence. The Consumer Product Safety Commission also says to be aware of illegal fireworks. The agency says last year about 43% of fireworks tested by their researchers were found to contain illegal parts which could severely hurt people. Some of those parts included fuses that don't comply with the law, chemicals that are prohibited, and the overloading of pyrotechnic materials. In other news, right now police are investigating after finding a man dead overnight on the northeast side. The investigation started with a welfare check. Police finding that victim on a sidewalk near North WW White Road and I-10. Paramedics pronounced that man dead at the scene. Officers found shell casings near the body. Then around the same time, police got another call about an abandoned vehicle with bullet holes on the I-10 access road not far from that first scene. So far, police have not made any arrests in that case. A store clerk tries to stand up to a crook and ends up getting hurt. Police say a man walked into a gas station on North New Braunfels and I-35 this morning and appeared to be taking some items from that store. So the store clerk confronted him and told him to leave. As that man walked out, though, we're told he grabbed a couple more items. Officers say he then ended up going back inside, breaking the glass door and cutting the clerk. That clerk is expected to be OK. Police still looking for that suspect. Take a check at your Tuesday traffic out there on this 4th of July, I-10 and FM 1516. Looks like there uh, might be a 
vehicle that's uh, got some trouble there that they're responding to. Other than that, not a lot of traffic to report out there, but a lot of folks heading to events tonight, so be careful and take your time. Meanwhile, <laughs> severe weather impacting many people's 4th of July plans and could cause a headache for those who are traveling. New Jersey seeing heavy rains. New York City under a flood watch. Hailstorms hitting parts of North Carolina and high winds toppling power lines and trees in Tennessee. Oh, it looks around like 10 to 12 feet right now of water, just in the basement alone. I just saw it was loaded up to the stairs. Over a thousand flights have been canceled coast to coast as millions prepare to return home following the long holiday weekend. Remember, it's always a good idea to check on your flight status before heading to the airport and enable those notifications from the flights uh, from your whoever you're flying with so they can let you know if there's any problems. That's right. Yeah, a lot happening across the nation, but today, honestly, just a pretty nice summery day for us. Generally, temperatures have been in the mid to upper 90s around San Antonio. Lavernia clocking in at 100 degrees, but it's stayed below the triple digits here in San Antonio. It is breezy outside right now. That's going to factor into any firework displays tonight, so keep that in mind. Coming up in the forecast, we'll talk about your firework forecast. Breezy, but nice for fireworks. Rain chances actually increase a little bit in the coming days. Still not for everyone, but a chances there and then looking ahead that heat high returns soon with triple digits. I'll show you when it'll be the hottest in the forecast coming up in just a bit. Tim. Thank you, Sarah. We'll look forward to that. It is not your imagination. If your phone has been running slowly or your battery's draining quickly, it could be the heat. Yeah, hot temperatures are not your phone's friend. 12 on your side. When the phone gets overheated. That summer sun, it can wear you out. And it's not just you, it's your phone too. You can cause major performance issues, reduce speeds. Uh, your phone could even uh, unexpectedly shut down and in some cases may not turn back on. Kelly Yarger with Batteries Plus says too much heat can permanently damage your phone's battery. Ever seen this on your iPhone? Apple's warning, your phone's too hot. The ideal operation temperatures for these phones is roughly around 32 to 95 degrees. 95? Lately, that's a cool front. So what can you do to protect your phone? Well, the first thing's pretty obvious. Keep it out of direct sunlight. But Yarger says you don't want to do this either. Leave it in the car. It gets ridiculously hot in there. Even putting it in your pocket on a very hot day is a bad idea. Instead, he says, use something like a backpack. Another no-no, stacking devices. Devices. It generates heat. If your phone gets hot to the touch, close your apps, lower the brightness, put it in airplane mode, and remove the case for a bit. It traps heat. Or the easiest thing, just turn it off. What you do not want to do with a hot phone is put it on charge or put it in the fridge. Yeah, it's a thing. Condensation can damage it. Bottom line. You're using your phone excessively and it's hot and you feel your phone's warm. I'd get off your phone for a while. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. So if we're keeping track, ketchup goes in the fridge, phone does not go in the fridge. Still ahead, we're taking a look at some of the 4th of July events happening across our area tonight. And the five things you can do to make grilling out cheaper this summer season. on for the news at six o'clock tonight. A generous new grant will ensure over 50 student success coaches will remain in San Antonio public schools, offering students extra support at six. The services they provide that help students stay in school. We'll have that story and more for you tonight on the news at six. Here's a look at some of the events going on in the Hill Country to celebrate the 4th of July tonight. Fredericksburg having a fireworks show at Lady Bird Johnson Municipal Park. That'll start at 9.30 p.m. And in Kerrville, the 4th on the River celebration taking place tonight at Louise Hayes Park with the fireworks expected to go off sometime around 9.30 p.m. Here closer to town, the Woodlawn Lake 4th of July celebration is going on right now. They've got food and live music out there. There's games all the way into the night. Of course, the night wraps up with the big fireworks show. And SeaWorld and Six Flags will be having their 4th of July celebrations tonight. The fireworks show at SeaWorld expected to go off around 945 tonight. And the fireworks at Fiesta, Texas expected to go off a little earlier around 9 p.m. Season pass holders get in free and VIP viewing starts at $20. You can find a full list of 4th of July celebrations on our website at ksat.com. Just scan that QR code on your screen to take a look. 
That list includes some of the fireworks shows and other events that are happening the rest of the night. The season of festive cookouts and grilling is here with the start of the 4th of July and the costs for those can add up pretty quickly. There are five things that you can do to help keep the prices down though. The first is pretty simple and common sense and that's use what you already have. Don't forget about the things you already have in your fridge and pantry. Number two, set a budget before going to the store. Three, buy in bulk. Four, if you're grilling, think about some different meat cuts. Some cuts are pricier than others. Lastly, you can get creative and possibly go for a meatless meal altogether, although that wouldn't be grilling, I guess, for some. There are plenty of recipes that use veggies or less expensive ingredients. Get all of those colors in there. It makes your tablescape look beautiful. It's fresh, it's good for you, and it saves you a little money too. Well, Betty Crocker, Tim is handing out tips. Here's another one. Turn your cookout into a potluck. You can encourage guests to bring a side dish or dessert to share. That way your hosting costs are lower and you get a more varied food spread. David Sears liked that comment. Hey now, Tim. Hey now. It's the 4th of July, folks. Listen, Not a lot of news happening, and that's a good thing. Grilling veggies is great. I love the squash and the zucchini on the grill. I guess you could probably smoke that. Delicious corn. Absolutely. Hey, I want to start with a little 4th of July weather history for San Antonio. Why not? I'm in charge of the forecast right now. Let's go ahead and take a look at that. The warmest 4th of July we had was 103 back in 2009. Our coolest high temperature ever recorded on the 4th was 82 back in 2007. And our rainiest 4th of July was in 2003. We saw almost two inches of rain, a damper on the forecast for that 4th of July in 2003. But today we got up to 97. Not too bad when you consider that the average is 94. So again, not all that bad around San Antonio. I do want to mention there are a couple of very, very small isolated showers. Let's zoom in to areas closer to uh, Kennedy, Carn City and Yorktown. You can see very isolated rain. So there is a small chance that we're talking 10 to 20% for an isolated shower around San Antonio by 8 p.m. But after the sun sets, I mean, firework displays are going to be great tonight. I'm looking forward to driving home after the night beat and seeing fireworks everywhere. We'll be looking at uh, temperatures in the 80s. One thing to keep in mind, and this is important, winds are going to be breezy south at 10 to 15, gusting up to 25. So if you plan on setting off fireworks outside of city limits, know that you're going to really want want to make sure those fireworks are anchored down or they might blow over uh, on accident. So keep that in mind. All right, in the future cast, starting off the day tomorrow with some clouds a lot like today and then in the afternoon, partly cloudy skies. Notice that the future cast a little bit more robust with the potential for an isolated downpour tomorrow between 4 p.m. and 8 p.m. That is possible. Again, coverage is only going to be about 20%. Low chances for rain, but the chances there during the peak heat of the day. So in your case, that 12 hour forecast 78 in the morning, mostly cloudy by about 10. It'll be 84, still mostly cloudy noon, 88. Uh, and then in the afternoon, partly cloudy skies with temperatures topping off right near 96 and an isolated storm is possible during the later evening, uh, pardon me, later afternoon, early evening hours. Here's a look at forecast highs in neighborhoods tomorrow. Uh, the average high is 94, so it'll be 97 in Bandera, 94 in Bernie, 97 in Rio Medina, 96 in Seguin, 97 in Nixon Smiley. And if you happen to get one of those cooling downpours, your temperatures will drop pretty quickly. It is that time of year where we get those summer showers and storms off of the sea breeze, uh, and it's nice to at least have that as a possibility. We were mentioning severe weather across the nation earlier, really across the central plains right now. That's where we've got severe thunderstorm watches and warnings. And so, yes, looking ahead to tomorrow, uh, if you do have plans to travel out uh, from San Antonio across the nation heading home, make sure to check with your airlines. Heat high, though, is firmly in place across the western tier of the United States. And this, this is the big blue bully. It's going to be coming back, and it's going to be coming back strong by the weekend. Take a look at when triple digits return. We've been enjoying a bit more of a mild uh, summer start to July, but by Saturday into the weekend and next week, highs are going to be right around the 100 to 102 range with heat index values as high as 105, 106. All right, looking ahead again, 20% Wednesday, slightly better rain chances 
this Thursday, 30%, and then the heat returns by the weekend. Coming up at <clears> 6, <throat> I've got the actual weather from July 4th, 1776. Ooh. I want to show you that. In Philadelphia. In Philadelphia. All yep. right, we will look forward to that. Thank you. All right, David Sears, the Spurs did not have their number one draft pick to no. kick off the summer league, and they didn't need it. It shows that the, the other guys can show some of their skills yeah. without Wimbanyana getting all the attention and sure. getting all the accolades. So when we come back, the Spurs summer league team look like a bunch of seasoned veterans compared to the Charlotte Hornets. Larry Ramirez is live from Sacramento next. Point six points in 24 games. Barlow. The Summer League Spurs came out and completely crushed the Charlotte Hornets. What do they say? Sometimes you're the windshield, sometimes you're the bug. The Spurs were the windshield. It was that bad for the Hornets last night. If you tuned in just a few minutes late to the Spurs game last night, you still caught the blowout as it was happening. The Hornets let their matchup get against the Spurs get completely out of hand in a hurry. It all started with Julian Champini's three-pointer just 32 seconds into the game, and San Antonio never trailed. It took Charlotte over two minutes just to make their first basket of the game. For more on the Spurs' big win and their California Classic debut, let's take you to Cal. Ooh, he's got a nice short sleeve shirt on. Looked really cool out there, Larry. How is it? <laughs> Yeah, thank you, David. Oh, it's about 93 degrees today, so really not all that hot. So the Spurs, though, they were hot. They certainly looked good last night, right? Not mid-season form or anything like that, but they looked really good considering it was their first ball game in nearly three months. And when you also factor in that outside of three to four guys on the roster, they haven't played any games together, and they looked sharp. The Spurs led the Hornets from start to finish and by as many as 32 points here in the California Classic. Spurs forward Julian Champagne was the best player on the court in this one, leading the way with 30 points with 15 of those points coming from three-point range. Dominic Barlow was next with 24 points and 11 rebounds, starting his summer league off with a double-double, and he went 10 of 13 from the floor. The Spurs led by as many as 21 points in the first quarter, and they never took their foot off of the gas. Yeah, I think, you know, being in the offseason, coming in in shape, ready to go, ready to run, you know, playing fast in summer, you know, it's a lot of, you don't get much time to practice with the group, so, you know, you got to be ready to go and just effort and energy is going to you know, be the deciding factor at the end of the day, and I thought we did a good job on that. I think we did good. I think we came out here and uh, and did what we spoke about, you know, coming here, playing with energy and, and, and playing together. I think that was the, big, the biggest part. Whether you win or lose, I think I come here and play hard. So I think we did that and came out with a dub, so. The Spurs will face the Lakers tomorrow night at 7, their final game here at the California Classic. And coming up at 6, the Spurs are going to talk about guarding Brandon Miller, the second overall pick in the recent draft. David, back to you. All right, Larry, thank you much. We'll look forward to that. Also coming up at 6, you can't have the 4th of July without hot dog eating contests. We're going to show you who won the early contest that was delayed due to a lightning storm up there at Coney Island. It's not 4th of July until we see Joey Chestnut Gosh. cramming hot dogs <laughs> down his gullet. Thanks, David. And he crammed a lot of them. <laughs> we'll look forward to that at 6. We'll be back right after this. All right, have fun tonight. Be safe. Temperatures are going to be in the mid 80s. No problems with fireworks forecast tonight. But it's going to be a bit breezy, though. Winds from the south gusting up to 25 miles per hour. Tomorrow, 78 in the morning, 88 at noon, 96 for the high. Not too bad for a July day. And then looking ahead, I'm sorry I got to do this. We are seeing triple digits return to San Antonio, especially by Saturday into next week. One glimmer of hope, though, is slightly better rain chances on Thursday, only 30%. But hey, the hope is there. Well, hang on to that hope. Thank yes. you, Sarah. Thank you for spending part of your 4th of July with us. World News is next. We'll see you back here for more local news tonight at 6.